so we have an LN. I think the reason I circled that is because when you do a homogeneous <laughs> solution, you're always going to get a 1 over one of the two variables. So you're always going to get that situation. So if you don't get an LN antiderivative, something went wrong in your homogeneous path. So we got an LN Y bar. How in the world are we going to integrate that second one there? So I integrated the outer two, like the right side on the left side, but I didn't integrate the middle yet because it's not super easy. I can't just do it in my head. So it's okay during differential equations, if you see an easy like one over y dy, you can just integrate it right away. I have no problem with you doing that. Same thing if it was like cos y dy, you write down, oh, it's just sine. Uh, <clears throat> the middle one we're gonna have to work on. So let's move the integral out so I don't have to rewrite everything else. All right, what are some ideas to integrate this? So we could try U sub, we can't use U, so let's call it a W sub. I don't think we used W before in this particular problem. What would be a reasonable choice for W? 2, no, I don't think that's very good. 2U squared minus 1. And what does that make DW? 4U. 4U, DU. All right, we're almost good. Did I not do some algebra correctly? Does that look great? Yeah. Yeah. I don't think you carried the negative, or you carried the, you changed the positive to a negative on the right side. The right side. That's off screen right now. Oh. Oh yeah, sure did. All right, so we got one half dw equals two u du. What's the problem with this w substitution? There's no two u du. There's almost a two u du. What's the problem, though? No math. Yeah, it's just erase it. Can't do that. That's not math. All right, how do we get rid of that thing? How do we properly get rid of it? There we go. So we're going to unadd the fractions, or unsubtract them in this case. So this is integral 2u over 2u squared plus 1 du minus integral 1 over 2u squared plus 1 du. So I didn't do any substitution yet. I'm just breaking, I'm, I'm basically getting that minus 1 out using algebra, not my eraser. So you can't just take it, you can't just erase it, but you can do this. So my W sub is perfect for the left integral. So let's go ahead and finish the left one off. So any questions on the left before we get the integral on the right? How <clears throat> how in the world do I integrate that on the right side? That U sub the W substitution is not going to work because I got no U anything, so there's no that DW is not going to not going to fit in. It would look like a natural log if I had my derivative upstairs, basically. So that's pretty much that's what happened on the last one. And I had a nice, basically, DW at the top. So this one's a little more tricky. So I'm going to do a little bit of algebra. It'll be very not impressive. So I didn't do too much right here. What is this antiderivative? 
Tangent. Tangent. Tangent inverse. So it's basically tangent inverse. The only problem is I have a square root two u, not a, uh, not just a u. So if you look uh, in there, I basically need a second substitution right here, and I'm going to go with a v substitution. We're kind of running out of letters. Yeah, we'll do a v substitution. So I'm going to let v. It's an easy substitution. Let v equal square root two u, and do v. Is square root two du. I don't have a square root two, so it's one over square root two dv equals du. Yeah, so I use the letter v. <laughs> Otherwise, I would have u equals square root two u, which would it, the only value that would make that true is zero. zero. That's what I was <laughs> so that, that would not be a substitution. That would be writing a very uh, stringent condition. Exactly. Yeah, so my u's have the foot right there, basically. So that should be our new form after subbing. Got my constant. So we got negative 1 over square root 2 tan inverse v and now we're unsubstituting so it's tan inverse square root 2 u and now I'm just going to bring the original left side oh I have to unsubstitute on the left I have to get the w back to u so that was 2 u squared plus 1 so we got 1 half l n w one half ln two u squared plus one. Okay, so that was a nice trip down memory lane for Calc 2. I know that was at least a quarter ago. So it's been a little while. These are all important <coughs> skills to have. Remember, this is really not this is really class of all is calc 2, not calc 3. So most any, everything you learn in calc 3 won't apply here. So this is really calc 2 uh, skills. So now we're going to take that back to our differential equation. So we get plus 1 half ln 2u squared plus 1 minus 1 over square root 2 and inverse square root 2 u equals c. So I think we're done doing calculus on this problem. However, what's key, what is preventing this from being like the answer to the original? The u. So the u is not the only problem. Y bar. There's the y bar and the x bar. So we got to unwind all the substitutions we made. So at least I got out of the W's and the V's that we were working with. So now we're, those are off. Luckily they're off. That's why another reason I did off to the side. So I wouldn't have all these variables in kind of the main problem area. So I try to partition things off. So let's come back. Y bar. I'm going to circle everything that I need to unsubstitute. So that's basically what I have to take out. There are some U's and a Y bar. So let's figure out what all these things are. So Y, we'll do the, we'll unsubstitute the U first. So U is X bar over Y bar. So let's take care of that right now. So that was pretty easy on substitution right there. So I recommend don't try to unsubstitute two things at once, just one at a time. Now we need the 
y bar and x bar, how that relates back to x and y. That should be a super easy relationship. It's really important you write these things down. So <coughs> what I don't have is things solve for x bar. So I'm going to do that in the blue. It's super easy to do. x bar is x plus 1 third. And similarly, y bar is y minus a third. So those are the unsubstitutions we're going to make. Would, was those the right substitutions that I have right there? Yeah. Okay. I wrote them like half a mile up. And <laughs> <laughs> it's better working on paper, especially with two pieces of paper. You can like basically have split screen. Yeah, the original dual monitor. <laughs> it's called paper. Sometimes you can get triple screen. Yeah. In fact, you can buy a package of like 500 at a time. Crazy. Yes, new technology. So we got ln y minus a third plus one half ln two x plus one third over y minus one third squared plus one. Minus 1 over square root 2, tan inverse, square root 2, x plus 1 third, y minus 1 third, equals c. I mean, you must feel just so accomplished right now. That's crazy. Probably not the solution you were thinking of when you first saw the differential equation. <laughs> no. Nope. All right, so we accomplished, I think, four substitutions if you count tallied them all up, and of course, four unsubstitutions. Every substitution you make, you have to still change around the d, whatever it was, dx, dx bar, du, whatever in the world you took out. You got to always make sure you take out the derivative of that as well. So there's kind of two parts to any substitution you make. So I'm not going to check this. I could take the derivative, solve for y bar, but I can see it's going to show up in at least three places, then be factored, and then you can solve for it. But I'm just going to leave it here. This <laughs> one's pretty complicated to check. All right, so that was our first example. Now, as you can tell, this takes quite a while. This is a time intensive process because you're going linear to homogeneous and then homogeneous to separable and then solving separable and then walking backwards through all those. And of course, we just when we got separable, we still had to make two more u subs just to get out of separable. So now <coughs> we're going to do another example and these are going to be parallel lines. So we're not going to have a single point solution. So if we go back, we we're basically this is case one way back here. This was case one where we had a single, somewhere here, uh, not parallel, so we had this single HK right there. So now we're going to have parallel. These lines are not going to intersect in one point. So we're going to see how to solve them when they don't intersect in a point. I have a feeling if I ever used those math tools, I would just be offended. Which means that they must never intersect unless they're the same line. Yeah, so they'll either be the same line or they won't intersect, and we'll do uh, one of each. So when we get a quiz on something like this, it won't be a problem that it's going to be that long? Better hurry. <laughs> Better practice. Sweet. I'll pick a problem that doesn't have two crazy integrals I mean, after, you, after you've transformed it three times. Yeah, I mean, I'm just saying you could do that, but it, you might have to give us a little more time than just... Cause Technically, this took like the whole class time if we combine today and last class. Yes, it was time consuming. Yeah. <laughs> I was also talking the whole time. Hopefully, when you're your homework, you don't talk the whole time. <laughs> Maybe you do. 
That's the one habit you should not pick up from me. <laughs> There's other habits you should not pick up too. But that's the one painfully obvious habit you should not pick up is try to talk while you're writing. It took years to get this bad at it. <laughs> oh no, these are not parallel. Wait, that's the exact one I just wrote down. That was our first problem. Don't write that down. Jeez. All right, we're on the next page of notes. That's true. <laughs> so we could write, is the solution of? <laughs> there was no mistake. Okay. Obviously. <clears throat> All right, so there's a second method for linear coefficients in, in the same uh, case. So actually, we're going to solve this with a, a different method. So we're going to solve this, and I'm going to let u equal the uh, the first linear coefficient. So u is going to be this, and then v is going to be the second one. So that's going to be u, that's going to be v. So it's an entirely separate method. It's basically the same thing, but it's going to feel different. All right, what is the consequence for making these substitutions? Yeah, what? Yeah, go ahead. Go back to it eventually, like, um, substitute. Yep, so I'll definitely have to unsubstitute. So I can't leave my answers in U's and V's. What else, though? So I mean, I, yep, so if I'm going to take out basically X and Y, I am going to have to modify DX and DY also. So anytime you're going to do a substitution, you got to substitute out the derivative parts also. How in the world do I figure out DX and DY? It's really easy. It's the same way you find all your substitution derivatives. Take derivative. So all we're going to do is take, well, I'm going to use the d operator, not the ddx operator. So I'm just going to use the regular differential operator. Not with respect to any variable in particular. This is going to work the same way. You get du equals 2dx minus dy plus 0. So there's our derivative on the left. You can do derivative on the right now. It's probably easy enough. You can just write dv equals dx plus dy. So any questions on that right there? No? That's all right. So we're going to solve for d. I know it's a solve for du and dv, then substitute, but it's already solved for du and dv. So we have a linear relationship. What I really need to do is solve for dx and dy, but not in terms of du and dv. So, so that I could, what would I be assuming if I set them equal to each other. I'd be assuming that du equals dv, which is probably not true at all. So you want to be very careful if you just set two things that already exist equal to each other because you're basically creating a relationship. Uh, whereas when you're making a substitution, I just created u and v out of nothing. They didn't <laughs> exist before, so I'm not putting any additional conditions on here. It'd be very different than if I set like if I set 2x minus y plus 1 equal to x plus y. 
I'd be creating another relationship. Uh, that was you. All right, so <coughs> we have a linear system. I'll write it out in the regular form that you're used to. So solve for dx and dy. And I think it's super easy to eliminate dy. You can eliminate dy without you, with like two brain cells. You just add the two equations together, dy disappears. So do that one first. Get the easy one first. So I got dx is one third dv plus du. Any questions on that dx right there? If you're wondering why am I calling this linear? Don't you add the two? So yeah, I added these two together, so I get three dx's plus no dy's equals dv plus du. Oh. Which is that guy right there. Yeah, make sure, you need to make sure your x's don't look like your y's, your u's. You have to make sure your letters don't look the same when you're writing math. I have a different font, I write math versus words. If I wrote my math like I write my words, we would not be, everything would look the same. <laughs> so I'm way more careful when I write math. Or at least I'm careful enough so that my x doesn't look like my y, doesn't look like the d, doesn't look like the u and the v. You notice my u's and n's look similar. So whenever I'm messing around with U's and N's, I'm extra careful. <laughs> Same thing with S's and 5's. We've gone over that, though. All right, solve for dy. You can uh, back substitution, or you can use uh, this relationship we just got. However you want to solve for dy, go for it. Probably 2 of the first equation minus the second is another way. Lose elimination again. Yeah, just go elimination again. Elimination is a good general strategy when in doubt. So we got dx and dy. So we're ready to take out all the x's and dx, all the y's and dy. Let's be smart about it. <coughs> it would be pretty miserable to solve for x and y just to sub out this right here. There's a really fast name for this, and it's u. Right? I let u be this entire thing. So that's u. V is this. So those are really fast to sub out. And then the tricky part, it's not tricky, but you just put in dx and dy. We just computed. So go ahead and do that right now.
we got u times the new dx plus v times the new du. So we've seen something very similar to this before in a homogeneous. We had this kind of form where our the derivative part expanded. So what do we do in the case where the derivative expanded like this? We distribute and we regroup with the derivative. So we basically want to collect the du's and collect the dv's together. So do that right now. Distribute and collect the du's and the dv's. Actually, I don't want to distribute, or do I? My notes ended like five minutes ago. So if we integrate, we have to integrate all four terms. So we can't just integrate some of that. I can definitely do that integral and that integral are easy. The ones I'm worried about, I'll draw in purple. Those guys. So we're supposed to be pairing things up. Hmm. Now I'm worried if, if I change it around, I'm going to have u's and v's in front of the dv, and I'll have v's and u's in front of the du. I was going, I was just worried that we have mixed variables, which is not good for integration. Those are D. Uh, I bet that's what we have. Yes, multiply by three. No reason to have fractions when you don't need them. All right, so the magic word was said, which was homogeneous. Pretty sure we have homogeneous here. Oh. I like TV. <laughs> That sounds like that sounds very homogeneous y. Homogeneous. I think it's already an adjective. Alright, so I'm just gonna write the word homogeneous and be done with it. Because you already know it. <laughs> Obviously. <laughs> What? <laughs> what is F equals MA? It's just a homogeneous. <laughs> We're just making a homogeneous substitution. So let's tackle the parallel or coincident, coincident lines, which means the same. We're still an 8, right? Yeah. Alright, so this is case 2. Coincident just means they're the same. Let's let's just solve the uh, same line problem. So it'll be the exact same line. So we'll just do the first one with an example. Wait, 
like these are not the same. All right, parallel lines. All right, how do I know they're parallel? Because they're written next to each other. <laughs> <laughs> so how do we know the? How do you know the parallel lines? So I could, so I could find their slopes. They'd have equal slopes if I solve for their slopes. We did solve for slopes before. Uh, so the other way, the quick way, they're basically the slope part, which I underlined. They're linear multiples. There's multiples of each other. So that's how you want to see it. You just double the first one, you get the second one. But that doesn't work on the constants, which means they're parallel, but not the same. If they were the same line, my second line would be having what constant? It would have a minus two. That would be the exact same line. The entire line is a multiple. But as it happens, just the kind of slope part. So when the part I underlines the slope part. If I think we said it was a negative y over x coefficient or the other way around. But we computed the slope before. It's easy to compute. So here's how we're going to deal with uh, parallel lines. <coughs> Let u equal 2x plus 3y minus 1. Now what we have on the other side, what I underlined is 2u, except not quite. It's almost 2u. It's off by a constant. So what I'm going to do first is write down u, which is 2x plus 3y minus 1. So I need two of those. So I get my 4x plus 6y. So yeah, so this will give me a minus 2. So to compensate, I need a plus 4. So what I did, I'm just exploiting the fact that the first two terms are a multiple. And I'm off by a constant. So I just had to figure out that constant that we're off by. Which of course is 2u plus 4. So we're trying to figure out which how we can make the second, well, I guess it's all one equation, but the second part of the equation to be parallel to the first part? So, well, they are parallel. What I'm doing now is exploiting that fact by making a u, basically a u substitution. But in the second one, I don't need a second variable because they're off by a constant. And the fact that they're off by a constant makes this a lot simpler. And the solution will be way simpler. Before, they were not off by a constant. They were off by a variable. So when I say off by a constant, here's two parallel lines. No matter what x value you pick, the other point is a constant value above it. Whereas if your lines are not constant, you pick an x value, and sometimes you're a little below. You pick a different x value, sometimes you got to go up. And the amount you're going is variable. Whereas in parallel, the amount you're going is constant. So it makes our algebra and our calculus very easy. So that's the kind of geometry behind the scenes. And what we're seeing is the algebra and calculus right now. All right, so let's, uh, what else do I have to do? I just created a new variable. What else do I need to do? K derivative. K derivative. You can answer that as a Calc 1 student. So you should be getting pretty good at these substitutions. So we got just 2dx plus 3dy minus 0. So it should be pretty clear what these substitutions are for the coefficients. I basically wrote them down below. Now all I have to do is take out dx and replace it with some du stuff and take out, um, let's see, and we're going to actually leave one of those two variables in there, either x or y. doesn't matter which one we leave. Uh, it's equally tricky to solve for dx or dy, so let's let's just solve for dx. So I'm making a choice here. You could solve for either one. I'm going to choose to solve for dx. So 
let's make our subs now. So we have U. I'm going to take out DX now and replace it with that one half DU minus three has dy plus two u minus four two u plus four dy so how many actual variables do we have now in in our latest version and don't count the d y d uh, u but how many actual variables do we have really two. There's u and there's y. So if this is separable, we need to split this up again. So we're going to sort, sort it by uh, collect the dy's together. So same, same strategy we do in general when we get to this one. questions on sorting the du and dy terms apart. What type of ODE do we have here? It's the easiest type. Separable. So we, all we got to do is separate. We got a little bit of the u next to the dy, so we just divide by that. Fractions, let's, how do we deal? You know, let's multiply by two on the previous step and then our fractions will be way less bad. You can do this trick anytime you have linear, you just multiply by your you know, product of all your denominators, and then you don't have fractions in anymore. So just divide u over u plus 8 du plus dy equals 0. So antiderivative. So you have to do a u substitution in order to integrate this right here. So the fact that u plus 8 is in the denominator is bad. So we let v equal u plus 8. So dv equals du. And v, I'm solving for v, ooh, solving for u is v minus 8. So you get the antiderivative I have at the bottom of the screen right there. And then you split this guy up the same way we did earlier. We s we're going to unadd the fraction. So you get 1 minus 8 over v dv. And we just integrate that. So that's v minus 8 ln v. And then on substitute, our v is u plus 8. bring 
with the Y and the C down also. So that was actually a Calc 1 U substitution. And it was the very end of Calc 1. We did problems like this. And it probably seemed extra tricky when we did this in Calc 1. All right, we're almost done. What do we have to do to get to the answer? So we got to get U out of there. We just created it. We got to unsubstitute. So it's 2X plus 3Y minus 1. Of course, you can add negative 1 and 8, but that's not very exciting. This one would be way more fun to check than the last one. I wouldn't mind too, bad, too much checking this one. So we're going to do uh, parallel or the same line tomorrow, and it will be really similar to what we did right here. We'll just make this uh, basically. We'll let u equal the first coefficient. Let's see. We go here for a minute. We'll make this u just like we did this time. The only difference is this one right here will be something like just two u. It won't be two u plus a constant. It'll just be a multiple of u. So in some sense, it'll be a lot more simple.